Are you stupid? You are the cause of the delay. I want you out of this project. So you will commonly hear this in the construction industry. All right? So I can remember seven years ago, I was so excited on my new role as a country head of a global real estate services company. In one of our projects, our client has an issue on the structural of the building. So I gave my advice. Then the client asked, why would he listen to me, a young Filipino? So I initially don't know what to do. Good thing, our regional director, who's from Australia, replied and said that is also his suggestion. Then the client accepted it. So there can be a lot of stakeholders in a project with different culture, personality, and even motives. And it's usually challenging. So just a quick background about myself. I love numbers, and math is my favorite subject, which led me to civil engineering. And uh, uh, English, probably not my strong suit on my earlier part of career. And back in college, um, we were asked to solve so many math problems. Algebra, finding X, um, trigonometry, physics, soil mechanics, strength of materials. Uh, then I had my own specialization, which is construction and technology management, which led me to a career about construction project management. And in my role, I rarely used those complex formulas. I never used calculus. And because it's a very masculine uh, industry, I can even find a girl and ask her, hey miss, are you a mathematical equation? Because you're so beautiful at your simplest form. So I might not be able to, to um, use those, uh, so all those quizzes, exams, I might not be able to use them in my role, but it helped me to develop my critical thinking, planning, and problem-solving skills. So as a project manager, we aim to deliver projects on time, budget, good quality within scope. But despite all the risk analysis and planning, as you can see here, 45% of the projects experience project delays, 38% are over budget, and 34% experience scope creep, wherein there's, additional, there's a lot of additional requir requirements from the original scope. This is from the PMI research back in 2021. And then in uh, a US Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, construction has the highest turnover of 54%. Why? Well, let me share you my first experience uh, during construction. So my first project back a few years, around 15 years ago, I was doing my inspection on the eight, uh, I was on the eighth floor of the building. I came near the stairwell and I heard our construction manager shouting yelling, cursing the electrical contractor from head to toe. And then on that same project, our senior manager had an argument with a client and he was asked to be removed on that project. So there's a client representative who approached me. Hey, Jomel, you're new to the industry, right? A word of advice, S Y. O B. It's like, what's S Y O B? Save your own butt. All right. So, okay. So for the first few months, I I just go with the flow. But realized that the, the environment is becoming more toxic. So I stepped back and realized I have options. First, go with the flow. But I know I'm adding to the problem. Or second, be the change that I want to be and become a solution. 
So this was a very pivotal point in my career. As I was contemplating, am I in the right, in the right industry? So in a meeting it, uh, with all our contractors, suppliers, stakeholders, I asked them, guys, aren't you tired of playing this blaming game? That same as me, you have options. And I shared to them the possible outcomes. A simple message, change the trajectory of that project. When I told them, we all are here with one common goal, and that is to deliver this project successfully so that we have a happy client and this project will resonate in the market that will give us more projects. So we were able to um, hand over that space uh, on time despite challenges in terms of our close out. So that experience led me to my personal mantra on delivering, pro delivering projects, future projects. And that is tulungan, hindi turuan which means helping, not blaming. So, do you believe that often the best solutions are the simplest ones? Well, let me share to you uh, a quick example. So, um, in our office, so this is, uh, in our office, we aim to have uh, ergonomic space wherein uh, we plan to have height adjustable tables. So we you can press up, down, you can work standing or sitting. So that table alone will cost around 800 to 1,000 US dollars for a very good brand or around 300 US for mid-end brand. So good thing, our construction manager suggested, hey, we actually have a table on our warehouse that is height adjustable but manual. You can see it's a crank there. I was like, okay. Why not? Okay, we can reuse that. So instead of spending that money, we only spend 10 US dollars for installing those tables. And then on top of that, actually my wife suggested, hey, why don't we put a mini exercise bike below to promote wellness? All right, so um, because of our challenge in terms of our cost, we are able to find opportunities we were saving now electricity because when you want to adjust the tables, you just do it manually and then promote wellness. And then we all, overall, we save 30% from the original budget. So having this adding value to our client uh, and having a solution-driven mindset with a concept of under-commit, over-deliver help us to have success stories in the market. So what I can share to, to be my biggest uh, corporate achievement before I left uh, corporate life last year. First, we're in the construction industry, right? So after our project, we ask our client how satisfied they are in terms of our performance. And we're happy to say that we got a 4.7 out of 5 or 94%. In that industry, it's very high. We know we are number one in terms of our customer satisfaction rating. And then to add on that, uh, there's a third party survey asking our employees how happy and engaged they are in, terms of, in, in, in our company, in our team. So we're happy that it came up 96%, which led to three consecutive years, there's no one who resigned or voluntarily turned over in our team. So, in closing, I want to give you two key takeaways on, ha on developing this solution-driven mindset. First, have the power of positive intention. Because if you have that, despite of the outcome, don't worry too much. Your team, the people, will still support you. And then second, be proactive. Act so that your intentions and goals will happen. So let me ask you, in your career, life, love life, relationships, uh, work, community, 
are you a solution or a problem? And if you are a problem, what can you change now to become a solution and a new SYOB? And that is soaring your own brand. So thank you very much. Thank you.